So I'm taking a road trip again. Uh, this time I'm going with my friend Murph and we're gonna go to a reenactment of the Battle of Guilford Courthouse in North Carolina. Murph and I just stopped at the Walt Whitman uh, rest area along the highway. Uh, we've been driving for a couple hours now. Uh, it's a long trip ahead. How you doing, man? Your back hurting you? Yeah. No. It's all right. All right. Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> So Murph and I made it to Greensboro last night after a nine hour drive from New York. We were in a bit of a rush, so I didn't really get a chance to film much on the way down because I wanted to make a lodge meeting here at this beautiful Masonic temple in Greensboro. Now, I want to say one thing. We have so many beautiful buildings throughout the country. I really hope that as brothers, we come together and figure out a way to save these mini museums to Masonic history. Uh, I just want to thank the brothers for their wonderful hospitality and to me that's one of the best parts of masonry is just traveling visiting other lodges other states other districts uh, and getting to meet brothers uh, across the country it's just so much fun to me Murph and I have been friends since high school he is not a Masonic brother but he is just a super guy but he is a reenactor and he will be participating in the reenactment of the Battle of Guilford Courthouse and that's the main reason we made this trip in downtown Greensboro, North Carolina is this statue of Major General and Masonic brother Nathaniel Green. Now we have spoken about Green many times in this series because he was one of General George Washington's most important generals. Greensboro, North Carolina is named for Nathaniel Green. Greensboro is named in his honor because of the actions that he took with his troops at the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Now the Battle of Guilford Courthouse was technically a loss for the American However, it was a Pyrrhic victory for the British because they took many losses and these losses helped lead to the victory at the Battle of Yorktown for the Continentals and ultimately a victory in the American Revolution. We are uh, right near where the Battle of Guilford Courthouse took place. Right now I'm standing between the American Cameron behind the camera and the British and Hessians are behind me. Murph and I got here around 9 in the morning. Uh, it's a little about 12.30 or so now on a Saturday. Just absolutely beautiful weather. I've had the chance to speak with uh, numerous reenactors and find out why they do this. I've also run into several Masonic brothers, which is kind of a cool thing. The weather is absolutely beautiful. These people really enjoy this. They really get a lot out of this. They obviously love history. And I have to say, all you hear is a fife and drum around here, and you get the smell of camp fire so there's some authenticity feel to it let's discover why these people love to do this I got in the hobby by I had gone to um, a uh, an event called the Arthur Middleton's birthday in Charleston South Carolina and I heard a drum and a fife and I walked over there and started talking and the next thing I know I was taking the King Shilling started um, actually when I was in the Navy and was uh, stationed in Connecticut. A lot of Rev War stuff going on up there. I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri, so didn't see it till I went out there. Watched an event, looked like it was a lot of fun, and so I joined up with the 5th Connecticut up there, and then when I moved down here, joined with the 2nd South. I've been doing it about two years. Uh, I got into it a couple years ago when I was originally in Florida, um, but when I moved up here, I, there's a lot more events here than there is down there. Well, we met... Uh, we met a uh, Paul Lopez at a uh, convention and he recruited us. And then invited us out to the Lake City event, which turned out to be the, um, our regiment's like start uh, start to the season or whatever for the reenactment season. And we got to go hang out with them for the day. And, and then they invited us to come out to Guilford about a month later. I'm assuming both of you are into history. Yes. Kind of, kind of have to be, I imagine. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not even the biggest nerd in the regiment. <laughs> and he's got a history degree, too. How does reenacting? acting? Well, you started before I did. We grew up first. Um, in the mountains of a very southwest Virginia, um, close to a place called Martin Station. Out there, it was much more um, colonial and Native American conflict. So, but I grew up watching that reenactment my whole life. I was homeschooled, just loved history. And so I got into it there. Those folks helped me get started. And she always loved it. And then when we got married, it gave her the opportunity to start as well. I am uh, Professor Stan Carpenter, retired from the U.S. Naval War College in Fort Rhode Island. Uh, I have been doing this reenacting since my sophomore year 
University of North Carolina, so 51 years. And why do we do this thing? Well, when people ask, why do you do this very expensive, very interesting hobby, my response is, well, some people bowl. Um, a lot of us are, are former or even present military uh, or police or law enforcement so or scouts. A lot of us are, are, are scouts. And so we're very used to that hierarchical type of organization. Uh, there's a lot of camaraderie. Um, I just saw a gentleman here I haven't seen in 25 years. Uh, and he's out this weekend. So it's, it's a lot of socialization, uh, a lot of camaraderie. Uh, some of us, like I say, I've been doing it 50 some years. My brother's here, he's been doing it 50 years. Uh, this gentleman right here, over there, we call him Tiki. Uh, he's been doing it, what, 30 years now? At least 25. 25, 30 years, and he's ex-Navy, just as I am. So it's a camaraderie thing. And most of us are very much interested in history. Uh, in fact, there was a unit we founded the, years ago, the first five members, three of them were PhD historian professors, and the other two had their BA in history. So there's a very serious interest in what we call living history, meaning, well, okay. you just look around and you see people yeah. cooking over the campfire, they're living the life like you would in camp, uh, and then when we go out in the field, we're replicating, uh, recreating, a, or reenacting is the technical term, uh, soldiers, and we, we try to be as authentic as possible and, um, and portray, most events are for the public, so portraying for the public exactly what uh, an engagement or battle in the period would have looked like. Uh, so it's a serious love of history, it's a camaraderie thing, and as Tiki here said to you, it's for the clothes. I mean, how often can you wear something as neat as this? You too can have this fun, right? Looks like a lot of fun. It is fun. Here, take this. This is a card. Cool. It's got our website on it. All right. We have a company of guys out here in the in the Carolinas. We're also up in up in the New York area. That's where I'm from. And uh, we got guys out in Ohio. We have guys in uh, California, Arizona, and when in Arizona. And when we get together. Uh, here, it's a, here's a picture of us all at Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh, wow. This is at Fusilier. Oh, man. You, you think yeah. there's enough of us? There's a Fusilier cool. Redoubt. We got a lot of guys. <laughs> all right. This is, this is the earthworks which our regiment garrisoned during the Yorktown campaign. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I'm on top of this.